There's one. There we go. That guy took it straight down. Man, these crop are fighting. They're fighting today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today, we're talking again about slip bobbers. This comment actually uh, came up in a couple videos ago, talking about if I don't have a rubber bobber stop, I don't have a pre-tied uh, yarn stop, can I tie my own slip stop for slip bobbers? And yes, you can. I'm gonna walk you through it in this video, and we're actually gonna go uh, find some crappie on some brush piles, late summer patterns, these crop, you're going to find the deepest cover that they can find. Um, if they can't find that, they're going to be kind of suspended in a little bit of roaming on some deeper pieces of structure, points that kind of come out, maybe some deeper ledges. 20 to 22 feet, 23 feet, that's where I'm finding most of them on a lot of our lakes. So we're going to tie on this slip bobber setup, show you this slip knot, how to tie it on with pretty much any line that you want. And uh, then we're going to go find some fish. All right, so as you know, my slip bobber setup is a eight foot ACC rod. Uh, it's my go-to slip bobber setup. If you're going to tie uh, a slip stop onto line on, instead of like using a, a yarn stop or a rubber bobber stop, some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I recommend braid. You can use whatever you got, to be honest with you, but uh, I, I do recommend braid. It, it Mostly because it's a little bit bulkier and it's going to act more as a stop, whereas you're going to have to really upsize in your fluorocarbon or monofilament to stop your slip bobber from actually sliding above your slip stop. So I'm just gonna take about, you don't need this much, but I'm gonna take about eight inches of 10 pound braid here. And again, use what you got in your boat. So to tie the knot, I'm gonna take my main line here, which is my high vis I'm gonna take, I got about six inches of braid I'm going to pinch halfway through that braid and I'm going to pinch it to my main line. doesn't really matter where it is on the main line. Go about a foot and a half, two feet up. And what you're going to do is you're going to pinch it together. For me, it's going to be my right thumb and index finger. And I'm going to wrap the tag end that is closest to the rod tip around both the main line and the tag end going down to where I'm going to tie the hook. And it's important as you wrap this to pinch, make sure it's both the main line and that tag end going down to the hook. Make sure you're wrapping both of those together and you got to keep a loop. See how it creates a loop here by my index finger and thumb? That's important. You got to keep that loop. So I'm just going to wrap this around both the main line and the braid here about four or five times. And definitely, this is something that it's a little more tricky. It's a little trickier to do, especially if. Uh, your dexterity is going on you. All right, so you see I got it wrapped about four or five times. I'm gonna take my tag end and you see this loop we created with the braid? I'm gonna put it back through that loop. Now, when I did that, I created another loop right here, okay? I'm gonna take this tag end and I'm gonna wrap it back into that loop. Just like that. Oh, sorry, my fingers are in the way. But I wrapped it into that loop right there so I can grab it. Again, this is something that is not a simple knot, but in the pinch, if you need a slip stop, this will work. Now I'm gonna slowly pull each tag end of the braid away from each other. You might need to slide some of these loops down, pinch them up. And they're gonna bunch up just like that. And that is your slip stop. Now, to test it out, got the bobber right here put it on the line and it should stop it. I need to pull it tight though because it looks like it's sliding a bit. Pull it a little bit tighter. And there we go. Ooh. Yeah, there's some wakeboard out wakeboard boats out today. So there is your hand tied slip stop in a pinch, if you don't have a yarn stop or a, a rubber bead bobber stop, this will work. So we're now that it's tied on, again, this, it's, you gotta pull it pretty tight though. Now that this thing is tied on, we are uh, gonna go find some crappie on some brush piles and catch a few fish. All right, and since I don't have live minnows today, we're just gonna go straight jig. When you tie on a straight jig in plastic, you go with a little loop knot very simple 
not to tie on. And since these have been working for me the past couple days, these little, these are beer gut minnows by Pete's Tackle. Promo code crappie at checkout gets you 10% off. Pete's Tackle Shop.com. But uh, any of these bait patterns work from a lot of different companies. Larger profile body, minnow, minnow pattern with a super sensitive tail helps trigger that strike. So these fish are about, yeah, these fish are about 10 to 12 feet down. So we're gonna adjust our slide here, or our slip. And when I cut the tag ends, you'll notice that I left about an inch on each side. You can see that. And that's because all slips, yarn, braid, whatever you tie, they're gonna, sl they're, you know, they're gonna come loose eventually. So it's nice to have something that you can tighten up. Especially if you start catching a lot of fish, that's usually how they come come loose is they get caught in that top eyelet as you're reeling the fish in. There he is. Oh, missed him on the drag. So there's a jig stopped. He's right. When it's super calm like this, you do got to pop that jig, especially if you're not fishing with live minnows. So as, you, as soon as you see some sort of pop on that bobber, you probably want to at least check it and set the hook. Come on, dude, smack it. Oh, he almost had it. This is what they look like on side imaging, these brush piles that I'm on. And these schools of crappie, I mean, they're just loaded. The nice thing about using braid, or smaller diameter braid, this is usually a little bit thinner than the yarn stops. And you can really tighten it down on the line so you don't have to worry so much. There's one. You don't have to worry so much about it getting caught on that last eyelid of the rod tip. Get out of that. Be a decent eater. I'm not keeping you today, bud. You're lucky. Let's see what this guy is, about a nine. Nine and a quarter, I'm gonna guess. There we go, nine, yeah, about nine and a half. But you don't have to worry about that, that braid because you can tighten it down a lot tighter than those yarn stops you buy at the store. You don't have to worry about that braid getting caught in that first eyelet. When you're going over these brush piles with side imaging or even down imaging, just shrink your screen and go really slow, especially with crappie definitely be able to see those fish. The, the crop will actually look bigger on your screen the slower you go, but they'll look elongated. They'll be easier to see. They won't just look like little specks, especially in this deeper water. So it's a quick little tip you can use, whether you're using 2D down imaging or side imaging. Wow, that was a, yeah, that was a quick pop. Oh, see how the bobber went sideways? It just never fell down. That fish was holding it. Guy's fighting. About another nine incher, I bet. He's nine and a half. Nine, well, nine and a quarter. Nine and a quarter, nine and a half, somewhere in there. Let's see, buddy. But they they pop it quick with those plastics. You gotta be ready. You gotta be paying attention to your line too. Line or your bobber. They'll both tell you if you got a you got a bite. Because oftentimes if you pop it, kind of move it a couple feet, that line doesn't go back down or if the bobber's sideways like that was. That's how you know you got a, got a fish on. There's one, there we go. that guy took it straight down. Man, these crop are fighting. They're fighting today. About another nine incher. Definitely a little bit, bit different of a bite than a regular live minnow bite. You are, buddy. Yeah, you're another nine. Nine and a quarter, almost. Let's see, bud. Key is with these plastics, just keep moving them. Especially if you got a calm day like today. The only reason there's wake is we got a bunch of wakeboard boats out here, which does help when you're bobber fishing. There he is. Got him. Here, bud. Be another decent eater. You might be, that guy might be 10. Put him on the bump board. Just shy of 10. Well, he actually might be touching. He's almost touching 10. There's a solid eater. Solid prime pan fish. It's your lucky day, bud. We're not keeping you. The important thing when you're using a bobber and jig setup is you do have to fan cast quite a bit. So this is my brush pile, but if you notice, I'm, I'm kind of moving around it. 
casting this jig all around it because these schools will spread out a bit. I mean, they're not going to be totally on the brush pile. They're going to chase some bait fish around it. They're going to be super aggressive this, this time of year. There we go. There he is. Yep. Buddy. Another probably nine inch fish right there. And the plastic's still good. You do this all night long. A lot of you asked for this, this video. So I wanted to bring it to you and kind of show you some tactics that I would use if I'm fishing a brush pile and I couldn't necessarily get on top of these fish. Let's say they're only in 12 to 15 feet of water and if you got on top of them with the boat, they would scatter. This is definitely a, a setup I would use in that situation. Oh, yes, he's on there. I don't think he's very big unless he's running at me. No, he's not very big. Quick release. He's only about a seven inch fish. Ah. Oh, it's time for a new line on this puppy. Yeah, that is not what you want to see from your mono. Got to re-spool this one. But I want to, I want to catch some more crappie. Like if you agree. Always got to procrastinate. Got fish to catch. There he is. That bobber went sideways. Hope you guys saw that. This guy's a fighter. We got another fighter here. All right, that is gonna wrap it up for me on the water. But yeah, there'd be another, another nice eater. Let's measure him real quick. Yeah, another nine, nine and a half inch fish, nine and three quarter almost. But there you go, super simple slip bobber setup. Tie your own slip knots if you forget to buy the rubber bobber stops or don't have any yarn knots in your boat. You can definitely tie your own slip knot. This is the uh, this is the one inch rod and bobs, three in one bobber. This is actually the Revolution X uh, bobber. Um, I know you guys asked that. I'm using a one eighth ounce jig. It might be a little heavy for this one. You might want to go to a one and a quarter, but since it's so calm, it didn't really matter. If it's a little more chop, you probably want to go to a one and a quarter inch bobber. Eight ounce ACC crappie six jig, and then the Pete's Tackle Beer Gut Minnow. Again, promo code crappie gets you 10% off at Pete'sTackleShop.com. This is my go-to setup, eight foot ACC. I have a 1000 size PC Fun Honor XT reel, and this is six pound mono, which I need to replace because it is yeah, it's definitely got a bunch of memory built up in it. So that's probably what I'm going to do tonight when I get back home. But there you go. If you're in a pinch, you can tie your own slip knot. Got any comments or questions about the setup or anything on sonar, post them in the comment section below. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. And uh, if you're in western Wisconsin and you want to go catch some crappie with me, I am guiding on a lot of the local lakes in this area. So check out Davis Lens and Guide Service on Facebook. I appreciate a like and a follow on that. So, all right, I'm going to get off the water here. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you.